All right. Let's talk to Darren Copeland, Let's as do we it. do every uh, Monday morning here on the Orange and Blue Retreat. Darren, how are you doing this morning? Sunday without uh, football? Well, I tell you, it wasn't without football, man. I got the kids together. We watched Reds. Well, we watched the first game that happened at, uh, well, 7.30 a.m. Oh, nice one. Yeah, yeah. so we watched 7.30 a.m. game, then went to church, and then we sat in front of the TV and watched Red Zone from 11 a.m. till 5. Then we took a break, ate dinner, and then watched the Saints and Packers uh, till they had to go to bed at 8.30, uh, and I watched the rest of the game. So, a break from football? No, sir. <laughs> Well, the red zone, there it is. All, that's all you need. Well, look, man, um, we, we're kind of not done talking about the Chargers, but we're looking ahead at this point. It's Monday. The players go back to work today after, after having a mini bye week. We're headed for New England. The Patriots are on fire. This is shaping up to be a great game in, in Foxborough. It sure is, and I think you guys have been talking a little bit, uh, too. I mean, I don't want to minimize the effect of Gronkowski, but, uh, you know, that's only his second 100-yard game of the year and only his first multi-touchdown game of the year. He's had one touchdown in four games, but uh, Buffalo shut Gronkowski out. The Jets sh- uh, shut Gronkowski out. Did Oakland uh, hmm. only gave up one touchdown. Minnesota shut out Gronkowski. So I think what you do, my I, my. Uh, thought is a little bit different. I think you put Brandon Marshall and you sort of treat Gronkowski as if he were a mobile quarterback since you really don't have a mobile quarterback in, in, in Brady. Right. Uh, so you use Brandon Marshall a bit as a spy and then with help uh, over the top as he needs it. But that frees you up to uh, let, the, uh, let the, your uh, quarterbacks do what they do. And also having that pass rush on both sides I think is going to stop a lot of things too. So you're not, that, you're not as worried as Lionel is. I think that one game against it, well, you know, you look at Chicago, who's been in free fall. They've, uh, they're yelling at each other on the offense side of the ball. They're, they're letting up lots of points on the defense side of the ball. They've uh, lost four of their last five. Uh, they've nearly put themselves out of the playoffs in a weak division. Uh, I think that uh, that's not the team that uh, you would have thought they would have been earlier in the season. I think that uh, New England wanted to make a statement. I think they uh, – decided to do that against a team that isn't very good right now. I, I think that's a great point. I mean, the Bears, you know, Gronk blows up against the Bears. Okay, you take that for what it's worth. Right. But what, I think what the Broncos are going to do, Darren, is they, they're going to play their base defense as they would and then see what happens. And if they have to make an adjustment, if Gronk is killing them, fine. They'll make an adjustment and do something else. But they'll go in and see what they can do first uh, as just as their basic as game plan, what they always yeah. do. And then you go in and say, okay, this is not working. We'll have to do something else. I agree with that. I also think that the Broncos are going to this game saying, you know, why are we so worried about Gronkowski? I think it's more important to know that New England Patriots are very worried about the Denver Broncos and what they can bring because there's not a way that, you know, anyone can stop them. Rivas sat out last week or, or he played minimally because he was in the doghouse. So you're, you don't have the defense that can stop all of the Broncos. So the Broncos says, hey, listen, try and score with us. And if you can, good on you. All right. Well, Darren, thank you. Darren Copeland, 24-7 News. Thank-